Great, so I'm back. Uh, so I just thought we would uh, wake through question number four of um, laboratory exercise number one, still loosely based on computer software. Um, so seeing as we've uh, got in a sense of how exactly go about installing VirtualBox um, and, and we've obviously seen exactly how we go about installing, or configuring and installing, or configuring a virtual machine and then subsequently installing an op operating system within the virtual environment. Uh, now would be a good time for us to <coughs> experiment with a different operating system. And and I thought I thought we'd use uh, Android X86 for this part of the exercise, specifically because we are familiar with Android. And uh, this, this issue sort of like came up, this whole notion of ensuring that, um, uh, or this whole notion of operating operating system but computer software being designed for a specific hardware architecture now we we were careful in in trying to frame our conversation around that area um, as, as being strict to a certain extent because um, we discovered or at least um, it was highlighted to us that it's actually possible uh, with a few tweaking around for you to be able to um, to essentially be able to work with an operating system designed for this sort of hardware onto a laptop or a desktop, for instance. And this is, this is specifically why question number four is there. So what we are doing in this particular part of the exercise is working with what's called a port of un Google's Android, right? So essentially a few smart people came together, and two of them actually, uh, pioneers of this piece of software, they came together and um, came up with an equivalent of Android ported um, to environments that are powered by AMD processors or Intel x86 processors, right? Um, I'm sorry for the noise here, I'll just have to quickly. Sorry about that. Sadly, I leave uh, I live, unfortunately, I, I live in a part of town where there are some unruly kids that uh, live close by, so constantly making noise. Okay, so, right, so for you to gain access to Android x86, obviously you have to download the ISO, right? So we're going to go through the same process where within VirtualBox we configure an environment uh, within which we're going to install Android x86, right? So operating system software. At this point, the assumption we're making is we've already installed uh, the VirtualBox or Oracle VirtualBox hypervisor, right, within which we're going to configure this environment and then subsequently install the operating system that we want, right? Uh, and remember, the end goal is to try and play around with utility tools associated with Android. All right, so just Google up Android x86 or just go direct to the uh, product homepage or the software homepage and you should be able to find it here yeah okay googling is just fine um, what you notice on the homepage is that there's a download button blue in color somewhere at the bottom at the middle of the page just click on download and then you should be able to take you to this downloads page now on the downloads page the first part so somewhere Somewhere at the top of the page, you find specifications associated with the minimum or the recommended requirements for virtual environment, right? Or rather, minimum requirements of the piece of hardware where you're going to install this ported version of Android, right? Uh, so, of particular interest for you is things to do with memory and disk space, right? So, you want to make sure that you have a machine that has uh, sufficient resources for you to be able to install hard, uh, to, to install Android. In my case. If I, if I can just showcase the resources that I have here, hopefully, uh, I have uh, about 12 GB of RAM, and then I, the 11 is shown, but I know it's 12, and then I have um, 106 GB of disk space, right? So I know I have sufficient resources. All I have to do is download the ISO, right? Once I download the ISO, yeah? this thing here, I will install it within VirtualBox. All right, so once you download the ISO, just fire up VirtualBox. Hopefully it's already installed in your machine. Um, and I think I, I was already going through a process of installing this, so what I'll do is I'll just delete the 
100 that are installed right you click the new button so that you create the new virtual machine i'll just call this android x86 the type is linux if you remember our discussion of operating system software we made mention of the fact that android is in fact a fork uh, of linux it's a linux like operating system uh, the version is linux 2.6 3x 4x 32 bit why 32 bit if you go on the documentation of this uh, piece of software they actually walk you through the process of installing um, installing this operating system within VirtualBox, right? So you notice saying you set the version of Linux to this, which is why I chose that. And then you specify the appropriate bit type. In my case, I've specified 32 bit because the the the, the version of Android x86 I downloaded is 32 bits. Yeah. Once you do that. Um, right, you make sure that you configure the appropriate RAM. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here and just say next, right? And then on RAM, I want to allocate at least three GB instead of two is recommended, but because I have 12, I can get away with slightly more. Actually, I'm feeling excited. I'll just give it four GB, so 496. There we go, so 4GB of RAM there. And then I'll say next, and next, next, next. I'll just give it 10 here. Uh, next, and then I'll, now that I've configured the environment, I'll say start, and then I'll click this button so that I choose the location of the ISO which is here, I'll say open, right? You, you, you choose this because the default option is always pointing to your CD-ROM drive or your DVD-ROM drive, right? So you want to make sure you explicitly specify the location of the ISO image. All right, so we wait for it to do its thing and you notice it's not as slow as the Ubuntu version. There's a couple of options that come up. Again, if you go to the website and you, you visit the documentation area of the website which is here you find that uh they'll explicitly walk you through the process of installing this sort of configuration details you need to specify so we are at this stage here where we want to install a new virtual machine right so we choose i hope i'm recording this i think i am so we will choose uh come on we'll choose installation these other options here will allow you to to run this piece of software without installing it, just like the option we saw in the Ubuntu. So I just say install, um, wait for it to do its thing. And then according to the instructions, they say we create and modify petitions. Uh, they are telling us as part of the instructions that we shouldn't use GPT. Um, then we'll create a new petition, primary. Just go with the default. Yes. And you notice that all I'm doing here is, uh, it has to be bootable. All I'm doing here is I'm following through with the instructions that are here. Yeah. So come up here and we will say we want to Right, so we just wait for it to do its thing. And then what we are going to do is we're going to quit. And then we're going to say, okay, because we're going to work with what the newly, newly created partition, the SD1 there. Just say, okay, we choose uh, ext4, right? And I'm choosing ext4 because, uh, yeah, they're recommending that and all of these, different file system types by the way will make sense once we have a discussion of uh, secondary storage very very soon um, yeah so we're going to say format this and then wait for it to do its thing 
uh, according to the instructions we should install grab right the bootloader will say yes and it will say yes then just wait for it to finish hopefully it should be able to so incidentally i was um i was recording i was recording this same process a few minutes ago and uh, the machine just hung so i had to restart this whole thing um it's a bit unfortunate here uh, one of the disadvantages of uh, of this mode of instruction is uh, unlike live face-to-face -face interaction i don't even know why i'm saying this but i might as well just finish what i'm saying and unlike the face-to-face -face interactions that we have here uh, things can go wrong um, and cost correction in part means starting from scratch like i did um, subsequently wasting time all right there we go okay so we're done and then we just say run the piece of software just wait for it to do its thing i'll just close these two tips there just wait for android to boot up and you notice that once we boot this the the kind of interface that you see is similar to what you see on your mobile device right which is pretty cool uh, uh, and I guess people that don't have access to Android devices will probably um, find it a lot easier uh, to work with such a configured virtual environment because remember we said the mobile tablet, you can see it at the back, background there, this thing here. Mobile tablet is being used as a case study device for this course. And so what that means is that a number of examples that we're gonna be um, using are going to be centered around android so in the event that you don't have an android phone you could just as well easily configure a virtual machine and be able to to perform tasks that people with android devices perform using your machine so i say let's go here um, and really the process i'm going through is what you would do when you're configuring um, a new android device or if you've formatted your android device uh, i have no idea why it's lagging here but And I'm going to let it do its thing and then I'll fast forward this because Right, sorry about that. I hope I'm still recording. Yebo, sorry about that. I had to pick up a call. So next, let's go, and then boom. So I just say start startup as new. And you notice what we're going through is the same process you'd go through if you were on an Android device. Okay, I don't know what this is. All right, so 
just say sorry about that I was typing I just go with the virtual Wi-Fi I have to fast forward that segment there um, Great, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a simple test to see if I can use, uh, and I'll use my uh, institutional account as to hoping it works. It should be able to work. Come on. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause for a little while here because I'm typing my ah my password, right? Uh, I think my thing crashed here. I hope it's working, which is a bit weird here. Let me just check. What the hell? Start it again. All right, great. So just to hoping this works, I'll just type in my password and then I'll log in. And I just got a notification here because I've configured two-factor authentication. I'll just say yes. Boom. Come on. All right, so I'm just going to skip this process just because it's taking a bit of time. Um, we, we don't want to turn this, come on, just skip it. We don't want to turn this uh, screencast into something else. It's the, the point of the screencast is just to showcase the fact that uh, uh, we can install, what owns a weird name here. We can install Android on a desktop machine using visualization software so you go all set <clears throat> all right so the the only other thing to do here is just to oh, come on always the only other thing to do here is just to test one one or two applications i'm just going to test one i'll fire up chrome from within this uh android virtual virtual machine and then i'll try and see if we can search for we can search for something come on and it's a bit slow here it's like i suppose i should have given it slightly more more ram right than 4 gb let's see if we can all right so we'll go to the course home page right I just go to the home page here. Ah, oh, come on. This thing is so slow. Okay. Go here and boom, you not notice that the view is similar to what you'd experience if you're accessing web pages on Android, right? 
So if you got this URL on your phone, you should see a view that's similar to this. Um, all right, so this seems to work. Uh, so I hope, I hope, here's to hoping, not hoping actually, this should help you get started and work through the other parts of the lab. Remember the key thing to do, especially for questions two through to five, is to be able to work with the utility software tools on these different operating system softwares, right? Um, and to be able to experience different types of operating systems. Uh, granted, the vast majority of us have probably experienced Android, right? Um, and a lot of moving parts here. Uh, we we are doing all of this as part of this. By all of this, I mean this tutorial here. Well, we are explaining the screencast. We're doing all of this using a piece of application software called VirtualBox or Oracle VirtualBox, which is a hypervisor. Specifically, it's a type two, uh, type two hypervisor, which runs on top of an operating system, right? So it it, it runs the operating systems that you install as part of this, uh, uh, that you install within this virtual environment, virtual box. Um, is, I refer to guest operating systems because they run within this application software that has to be executed on a host operating system. Great, thanks. Uh, good luck.